Hello, I'm Dr. Vanita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is an investigation into Murad. And I've already done one video. This is the updated video on new products that they've launched. So today we're going to be going through the claims that they make, the percentage actives, are they in the um, therapeutic index or are they using it as a marketing claim? Are there any irritants in the products? The cost benefit analysis, that's very important. There's no point having a great product if it's costing you a thousand pounds. Um, are there any dupes? So better versions that are cheaper, um, I'll also be talking about. And uh, As you already know, this video is non-sponsored. None of my videos have ever been sponsored and they never will be sponsored. It's very important that we, for our skin color family, have a place to go to for independent reviews without any bias. So everything I talk about is evidence-based and comes from their own ingredients list. If you do love skincare as much as I do, please do get your hands on a copy of Skin Revolution. It's a book that I've written, uh, published by HarperCollins, and it goes through everything our skin of color family needs. You can also join me on Instagram. I've got two accounts. Uh, you can join me on TikTok or on Facebook. I'm also in the comment section for every single YouTube video for one hour. So when you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you can come and ask me questions and I can respond in real time. If that sounds good to you, let's dive right in. Okay, so starting off with the first product is their Deep Relief Blemish Treatment. It's 40 pounds for 30 mils, so it is on the expensive side. The ingredients are water, then a group of humectants, so propendiol, glycerin, uh, pentylene glycol, then they use salicylic acid. So salicylic acid is really the only active in this product. All the extracts, the anti-inflammatories are all at a fraction of a percent. Um, I do like the fact that this product is fragrance free. Um, I think they've they've improved their formulas since my last video, um, which all had a lot of fragrance in them. And a couple of these products I'm gonna talk about today are fragrance free, so I like that. But in all honesty, it's no better than the ordinary salicylic acid. So for me, even though formula is a decent formula, I do like the formula, the cost benefit analysis doesn't stack up for me. And if it was me buying it, I would just go for the ordinary salicylic acid because you're getting the key active, the main benefit, but for less than 10 pounds. So for me, this is, um, is uh, not really. Okay, moving on to the next product is their Retinol Youth Renewal Eye Mask. It's 40 pounds for eight packs, i.e. eight pounds a go. Um, the ingredients are water, butylene glycol, glycerin, urea, and amino acids. So that's basically a solvent followed by humectants and some fruit extracts. So it is hydrating and it does contain retinol at a fraction of a percent, which I like. And it's also fragrance free, which I also like. However, I don't think it's worth the cost. At eight pounds a go, the maths doesn't add up for me. Uh, I think you're better off using reusable iPads. Um, so it's better for the environment. And you can use a retinol that's sort of 0.1% to 0.3% um, serum with humectants and you get you know a hundred uses out of it for a 40 pound bottle rather than 40 pounds for eight goes which for me doesn't make sense i do like the idea of occlusion around the eye area i do like the idea of trapping water and ingredients so you have better penetration and in theory you should have better efficacy because when the skin is hydrated the ingredients work better in the skin the enzymes are working optimally i do actually like the technology i do actually like the ingredients and i do like the formula it's just the cost benefit for me doesn't stack up there are a couple of good retinols on the market at the moment i do like paula's choice retinol um, we also have a retinol retinaldehyde antioxidant power serum and I also like uh, CeraVe. I'm actually doing a review of CeraVe later on today. Um, and their retinol does look quite interesting to me. By the way, just so you know, I'm drinking my coffee. And so that's why I'm my hands <laughs> over here. It's Christmas time. So my daughter's uh, making all her Christmas mugs. Right, uh, moving on to the next product here, which is Resurgence Retinol Youth Renewal Serum. This is 80 pounds for 30 mils. Uh, the ingredients here are water, silicone, and then fats. Uh, then the key actives, vitamins A they've used is retinol and retinol propionate. Uh, again, it looks like it is a fraction of a percent, which I'm happy with, and it contains ceramides, which I like. 
Um, everything else at this point is less than a percent, so you're not getting much efficacy. Um, plus, uh, you know, at this point, even I'm happy with the inkyless ingredients, but then they added fragrance which can lead to contact dermatitis in three to four percent of the population. So now it's an ex expensive product that can cause irritation with retinol, which is a bad idea because retinol is an alcohol. It can already be quite irritating. In single product, two products, you'd never ever want to have fragrance in, and that's an exfoliator and in your retinol because they're already irritating ingredients. For me, uh, this product is a no. If they made a fragrance free version and uh, it was at a more reasonable price because I know the cost of making a product like this, uh, they really shouldn't be retailing this at more than maximum 30 pounds. Um, so for me, it's a no. Moving on to the next product is the Targeted Wrinkle Corrector. This is 70 pounds for 15 mil, so it's extremely expensive. Uh, the ingredients are water. Second ingredient here is polysilicone 11, which is great. It's a synthetic silicone. It's a film forming agent, so it helps to smooth over the area temporarily. Uh, it gives a flexible mesh-like effect, if you like. The third ingredient here is squalane, which I love. It's an emollient, followed by fats, which are brilliant. And then sodium um, acrylates, which again is another film forming agent, which is why you get that temporary immediate effect of reducing fine lines because you're almost putting that cling film on the skin. And so it actually works as quite a good primer. It's also got humectants in here, which I, which is great as well. I love humectants. Um, but then the most important ingredient here is acetyl hexyl peptide 8 um, is one of the last ingredients on this inky list. So probably at an extremely low percentage. So I would say this is a hydrating formula that creates a film on the skin, um, little to no long-term benefits. So the key actives you would want in a product of like this would be your vitamin A, your vitamin C, and even peptides, maybe multi-peptides or at a higher percentage. Um, so for me, I mean, it's not really worth it, 70 pounds for no long-term benefit, just a film forming effect. I mean, it's up to you. I do like the fact it's got no fragrance in it. So if you do want to buy it, I'm happy with you buying it, but just so long as you know what you're buying. Now the next one could have been great. This is a Retinol Youth Renewal Eye Serum. It's 75 pounds for 15 mils. This is water humectants emollient. So just in case you don't know, water, uh, humectants basically hold water. It's like a water magnet and emollients smooth the skin. Then it's got retinol and retinol propionate. So those are vitamin A. So I'm happy with that but not much else everything else is less than a percent and it's got fragrance in it for me this is an avoid you would never put retinol with a fragrance on the skin it's just a, it's asking for trouble you might be okay the first few times but over a longer period of time it just it's not advisable you know you might be fine but i wouldn't advise it especially because this channel receives thousands of views i have to be very careful with what i recommend Moving on to the next product, which is the Environmental Shield. So it's got glycerin, silica, are your physical exfoliant, so physically removes skin. The only problem with a physical exfoliator is no matter how small the beads, no matter how gentle the beads, you don't know if you're removing dead skin cells on the top, which is what you want to do, or living skin cells underneath, which then damages the skin barrier, and then you end up in a vicious cycle um, of damage skin barrier sensitivity, dryness, irritation, and anything you put on top, you know, can feel like the skin is burning. So we have to be very careful when it comes to physical scrubs, and I'm really not a fan of it on the face. On the body, you can get away with it more uh, because the skin is just thicker, but on the face, you have to be, uh, it's just, I'm just not a fan. So then, they, so I like the fact they use glycerin first. Okay, so glycerin is the first ingredient as a high, highest percentage. It's a water magnet. It's going to hydrate the skin. Then they've got the physical exfoliation and then they put in water. So water is your solvent. It's the third ingredient. The fourth ingredient here is um, glycolic acid. And it looks like it's at about above 5% because it's quite high up on the inky list. Um, and so now you've got a physical exfoliator plus chemical exfoliator that I don't like, so the my least favorite AHA. And um, I've done a lot of videos on glycolic acid and I don't want to create a whole debate in the comment section on glycolic acid. The fundamentals of glycolic acid are that it's an AHA, alpha hydroxy acid, and it is the smallest, has the smallest molecular weight. And so tends to fly through the skin much quicker and can lead to irritation or burns quicker in skin of color, which can lead to hyperpigmentation. This is why I'm not a fan of glycolic acid in skin of color 
specifically, I would always recommend to you lactic or mandelic acid because you get the benefit, but without the cost, without any chance of burns, you know, or damaging the skin barrier. So even though glycolic acid is rampant in the skincare aisles of Sephora, of Ulta Beauty, of Boots, of every, you know, skincare um, shop you go to, it is not the best AHA for skin of color. Just logically, you know, you can deduce that yourself. Uh, and so I would I would tell you just to walk away from glycolic acid. Uh, in here, then they put in enzyme exfoliation as well. So apple fruit extract. Um, and this is again a bad idea. You don't add three different types of exfoliation. It's three potential different ways of irritating the skin actually for skin of color. And it's not just a matter of damaging our barrier, it's a hyperpigmentation that can last for years that I'm more concerned about. They added salicylic acid. I would normally be happy with you to use, you know, an AHA plus a BHA, that's great, but not with all the other exfoliation. And then they use tetrahexaldecalascorbate and ascorbic acid, both at, looks like at about 1%, so very, very low. Um, so with this product, you will see immediate brightness because you are essentially taking the top layer of skin away. And so your skin is immediately going to look brighter. That's a temporary brightening effect. It happens with any form of exfoliation, not because of the vitamin C in this product. However, over time, it can lead to a damaged skin barrier. So I definitely would not use this daily. Hardly any antioxidant effect. Plus it's got fragrance in it. Uh, if you're sending thousands of this in your head daily, um, I think you could be in a problem, uh, over a longer period of time with skin of color. So with this product, I would say stay clear of. Next product you've asked me to review here is a Rapid Dark Spot. It's 30 mils, for, uh, costs 75 pounds, which is very expensive actually. Um, and what you would expect in an ideal dark spot corrector are a bunch of tyrosase inhibitors, no irritants, because we don't want to cause more hyperpigmentation, no fragrance, because that can lead to contact dermatitis, leading to irritation and hyperpigmentation. Uh, ideally, you want humectants in it, so water magnets and emollients to smooth the area. Um, those are the key, you know, basic criteria you would want in a dark spot corrector. Uh, here, they've put in water, which I like. Then they add a second ingredient here, denatured alcohol, which is terrible because... DNH alcohol is volatile, right? It gives you a quick dry effect, but because it's volatile, it's literally moving water from your skin. So water is evaporating with it. Remember I told you we need humectants in the serum. We want water magnets in the serum, not water evaporation, because to create a healing environment in the skin, you want it to be well hydrated. So this is the first mistake. Sec second mistake here is the next ingredient is glycolic acid. So imagine you've dried the skin and now skin's not functioning optimally and now you've used glycolic acid at a high percentage. The only ingredients in this product that I love are glycerin and tranexamic acid, um, but it also contains fragrance. So, you know, honestly, this has one tyrosinase inhibitor in the entire serum. And because of that, I would tell you just go and buy the inky list tranexamic acid. It's fragrance-free, it's got the key active, it's not gonna irritate the skin and I'm happy for you to use that daily and it's cheaper. Moving on to the next product is the Intense Recovery Cream, 72 pounds for 50 mils. So this is meant to uh, repair a damaged skin barrier. It's got fats and silicones, which I love, but then they added mentha. Now mentha is a bit of a marketing trick because it gives you that cooling effect, right? And you think it's anti-inflammatory, but it's not, it's irritating. This is where education comes in because a lot of these lip balms, for example, have mentha in it and you think that that, you know, minty, um, cooling effect is good for the lips, but actually is an irritant. Uh, so avoid that. Plus they added lemon peel oil, which is another irritant plus fragrance. Now you would not add these irritants into an, a cream that's meant to repair a damaged skin barrier. It's the absolute worst thing you could do, the exact opposite of what you should be doing. It's a very poorly formulated product. Um, and for this price point, I'm very, very disappointed uh, in this particular product, I'm afraid. Moving on to the next product, here's a vitamin C dark circles corrector. This is 15 mils for 59 pounds. So again, very expensive. Ingredients here, glycerin, which I love, first ingredient, silicones, which I love, acrylates, which is gonna give you uh, that film. That's why you get that rapid, uh, immediate effect of almost like cling film on the skin. Um, covering up the fine lines. It's temporary, but it is effective. Um, and you can see the difference. Um, 
then add in niacinamide, ascorbic acid, amino acids, and tetrahydrocarbon dacascorbate. Uh, and I like all those ingredients. Uh, I do like the fact it's fragrance free. I do also like the fact that they've created this film for you because you're going to appreciate it. However, I would say it's a good product. I'm happy with the product, but to make it next level, I would have added vitamin A peptides and more tyrosinase inhibitors. However, as you know, dark circle creams go, I think this is a decent one. Yeah, so. That is my take on this product. The next product is their City Skin SPF 50 PA4 Plus. So I'm very happy with the rating. Uh, it's fragrance free, which I like. It's mineral SPF 50, which I love. Uh, it does contain retinol palmitate, which I prefer as a vitamin A. I rather wore that in the evening rather than during the day, just in case of any sensitivity with UV hitting the skin. Um, but it is okay. Um, and I do like this product. So for me, this one is a yes. What I would want to know is, have you guys tried this particular product and is any white cast? Because on skin of color, um, that would be my next question. But I haven't tried this product on my own skin, so it'd be really great to find out. City Skin, guys, right down below, do you find any white cast, yes or no? Uh, just to help our uh, skin of color family. The next product here is uh, HA BHA Cleanser. It could have been good, but it uh, has glycolic acid plus lactic acid plus salicylic acid. But I do like the fact that glycolic is at, at a low percentage. And I also like the fact that this product is fragrance free. But then they went and added a physical exfoliator. And I know why they did it. It's because, again, it's a marketing trick. It, people like to feel like something is happening. If they're scrubbing their skin, they feel tingling or pain or irritation and they feel like something is happening and so it is addictive actually um it becomes a feedback loop because now your skin looks brighter and you're associating your bright skin with the that feeling of scrubbing and so you go and buy it again because you feel like you're doing something good for your skin but in reality you don't need that physical exfoliation it can damage the skin and it's a marketing trick. Um, you're getting enough benefit from the uh, chemical exfoliation. You don't need those two, and um, that's the reason for this channel, so that you can pick out when something is worth your money and when it's just a trick. I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video, so make sure you're here. Please do subscribe and hit that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye.